are taking it on campus and uh, uh, and uh, online. So a lot of these people won't be here when I call your name. So when I call your name, raise your hand. If you're watching this at home, when I call your name, raise your hand at home. All right. Um, Holly Berger. Mark Butler. Warren Carr. Jeremy Clowers. Beth Coyne. Patrick DeChan. I know he's not here. Kendall Everson. Jasper Ford. Robbie Goodwin. Leslie Jennings. Lindsey Jones. Denise Lloyd. Peter Malik. Janet Maltby, Carolyn McCarty, Tyler Mead, um, Nicholas Mokras, Daniel Penfound, Laban Puckett, David Ramos, Christopher Rasp, David Salva, Elizabeth Schaefer, Brian Schmuke. I apologize if I mispronounce if I mispronounce mispronunciate any of your names. Feel free to send me an angry email. Richard Smith, Joseph Stanley, Jennifer Stevens. Michael Thomas, Michael Thompson, David Whalen. Yes. Who said that? Okay. <laughs> Norman Worth, Anthony Young, and me. All right. Last time we um, covered really the basic thought, the basic idea of what HTML is. As you know, there's a lot of things that can be on a web page. There's headings, there's articles, there's, there's paragraphs of text, there's images, there's links. All right. All these things can be on web pages. Well, how does a web browser, which is a program that's used to view web pages, know what's what? Because it's just in a plain text file. So if it says Lorain County Community College, how does it know to make that a header? How does it know to make Google you know, a link instead of just plain text? Well, it knows it based on what are called tags. Tags, you, know, you think of tagging something, you're indicating something. You're indicating something about the meaning of that text. All right? Because we're not dealing with plain text here. We're dealing with hypertext. Hyper means above, beyond, more than. All right. So hypertext is more than regular text because we can have links and images and other kind of formatting in it. So because of this, we have to indicate to the browser what is what, and we do that via tags. Now we went over some just one basic tag, or, or actually several basic tags, but all sort of variation on a theme. The header, the, the header tag, the H1 through H6, and think of those as the level of headings, like in an outline. So it's not that your first heading is H1 and your second is H2 and your third is H3. It's your first level heading. So if you have two things that are on the top level, two sort of main topics for your pages, both of those will be represented in H1s. Now one thing about web development, and, and for a lot of folks, especially for me, this is really the intriguing part of web development, is that there's really two sort of... Um, skill sets that come into play. And at different times throughout the class, we're going to be looking at one versus the other. Uh, the two different skill sets are the technical skill set and the design skill set. The technical skill set is simply, how do you do what you need to do? What do you need to do to make a link to google.com? What do you need to do to make an image appear on your web page? You need those technical skills. You need to understand the language. All right. 
The design part is how to put together a web page so that, so that it effectively communicates the, con, uh, the, the message that's trying to, trying to be gotten across. All right? There's a lot of web pages out there that from a technical perspective, they're sound. In other words, all the tags are coded correctly. There's no errors in it. Yet, they're a mess. All right? And why they're a mess? Well, because users can't find what they're looking for or um, it's hard to read or any number of different issues. And none of those relate to technical things per se. Those relate to sort of design perspectives. Um, it would be the equivalent of writing a paper in English that was grammatically correct, but didn't make any sense, didn't consistently tell a story or, or, or uh, uh, explain uh, uh, a point of view or something along those lines. So throughout the course, we're going to be focusing on those two things. Um, Initially, the focus is going to be on the technical and, and understanding HTML and understanding the tags that are available and all that. But we will be coming back through, to the design phase. It's important to plan your pages before you start. And I would even suggest sketch them out. So for example, uh, for your first lab, you're supposed to um, look at uh, a couple different technologies. Uh, HTML, HTML5, and CSS. All right. A lot of people, uh, just like a lot of people in English classes, probably don't outline their papers before they write them. Right? They just sit down at the, at the typewriter uh, and start banging them out. Uh, a lot of people don't just sit and open up their text editor and start coding their web pages. It's possible to do that when you're talking about very simple pages. And that's why people take a shortcut and do that. But it's sort of good to get in the habit of sketching things out. Now, to be sure, Initially, we're limited in what we can do. We're only going to study for the first assignment a, a handful of tags. So you're not going to be able to create elaborate web pages. It's still a good idea to spend a few minutes to plan on what your page should look like. So for example, if I was going to do this assignment, I might pull out a sheet of paper and sketch out something that looked like this. I might say, well, this is what I want my page to look like. I might want to have a title at the very top that says Introduction to Web Development or some other suitable title. All right? And you can't see that. Or, well, you can. Let me pull up. Or you can sort of see it. So you might have a banner on the top of your page, because it's a good idea to let people know what your page is about and, and, and not have any doubt as to what they've stumbled across. All right? It is funny, a lot of times when I, when I uh, talk about web design techniques or web design ideas, like having a banner on your page that says what your page is about, a lot of folks look and say, well, yeah, that's common sense. But as I heard someone put it uh, on the internet uh, within the past few days, uh, it seems sometimes like common sense isn't really that common. It's more like a superpower these days, all right? And therefore, a, despite the fact of it being common sense, I think it bears to, to say that. Because you can find websites that you can look at the page and like, what is this about? All right? You don't want your users guessing or, or thinking too hard about it. And I'm not saying that in a condescending way, all right? Uh, a lot of times software developers sort of bash users and say, oh, users don't know what they're doing and all that. I'm not saying it in that sense at all. I'm saying the reality of the situation is, is that people using the web, people using your websites are busy people. They want to get down to business and find the information that they're looking for. All right? They don't have time to figure out and decipher your navigation scheme or what your page is about or anything like that. If they can't find it on your site, they'll look somewhere else. All right? So therefore, you know, some of these things, you know, make it immediate, make it so that instantly the user gets a sense of what your page is about. So I would put, if I were doing this assignment, and watch, I'll get, uh, again, I'll probably get 40 copies that look exactly like this. Please don't do that. All right? I would then 
make maybe a smaller header for HTML and have a paragraph. HTML5 and then have a paragraph. Uh, and then what's the third one? CSS and then have a paragraph. So I've thought through the different ways that you could do this. Could you do it another way and have it be reasonable? Absolutely. All right. But, you know, what I don't want to see is simply, you know, a block of three paragraphs on the page, you know, with nothing, no headers differentiating them or anything along those lines. All right. Once you've plotted out what you're going to do, then you start thinking about what tags that you want to have in your page. You know, what tag will I use to represent this? What tag will I use to represent that? And so on. So again, even with simple, straightforward assignments like this, pre-planning is, is, is a good idea. All right. So let's start talking about the tags again. And let's look at our first example, which I had said last time was sort of incomplete. We didn't really do a complete first example. We sort of did just a fragment of the first example. I'm going to open it up in Notepad again. All right. One thing I stated, and I'll repeat this, and I'll probably repeat this, probably repeat a few of these things several times because I know these are the things that, that typically cause students problems, is number one, if you're on a Windows machine, the one thing I will do is make sure that you're showing file extensions. Every file has two parts to its name. It has the file name, a dot or period, and then an extension. And that extension is usually like a three or four uh, letter abbreviation that represents what kind of file it is. So, for example, this is an image. It's a JPEG file. So its extension is JPG. This is a zip file, so its extension is ZIP. If we had a Word document here, it would be, depending on the version of Word, either DOC or DOCX. All right? So that tells the computer, that tells the operating system what kind of file it is. So for web pages, we want to make sure that our files end in .html. All right? Um, When you refer to a file within your page, you need to give the, the full name, the precise name. So I've seen a lot of cases, and when we get into images, uh, either this class or next class, where students will not realize something's a JPEG file and think it's a GIF file and, and put autumn.gif instead of autumn.jpeg. So it's important to see the extensions. How do you see the extensions? It depends on the version of the operating system that you're working on. Uh, for this one, if you go and open up my computer, there will be, under Tools, something called Folder Options. If you're running Windows 7, it's the same screen, but you just get to it a little bit different way. I don't remember. Somewhere over here, you click on something. But there's something called Folder Options you click on. There's a View tab, and you uncheck this that says Hide Extensions for Known File Types. All right? So if I have that checked on, notice I can't see the full name. It just says that that file's named Autumn. So unless I'm very careful, I don't know if that's autumn.jpg or autumn.gif or whatever. But if I do go in and say show uh, file extensions, then I can see the full name of it. If you're having any problems with this, let's, let's do it in lab. I want to mention it to, to emphasize how important that is, but uh, again, it's kind of hard just to sit back and see me do it and understand it. When you get in the lab, make sure that you know how to do it. The second thing I want to uh, reiterate is that, again, when you make an HTML file, we're going to be viewing it two different ways. Only one HTML file, but we're viewing it two ways. We're viewing it in our text editor, which in this case is Notepad. We're also viewing it in the browser. The text editor being sort of the x-ray, seeing the, seeing the innards of it, seeing all the details of it. The browser being how the outside world is going to see it. The, once we finish the web page and put it up on a web server or publish the web page, how everyone else is going to see it. So that's why when I open this up, 
I can right mouse on it. If I just double click it, I open it up in the browser. I can either right mouse and say open with, and if there's a notepad option, notepad. Or I can go and open up notepad and then navigate to it. Okay, so here's the example we had last time when we were playing with the different heading tags. What I want to do today is I want to add um, sort of the tags that we skipped. And these tags are tags that are going to appear on every page that we're going to develop. They're, they sort of form the, the basic skeleton, the basic structure of the page, and then we fill in uh, the rest of the page with our specific content. So I'm going to go, I'm going to type these in, and then we'll take a second to uh, explain them. Notice that as I'm typing them in, as I type in the start tag, I'll also type in the end tag. So those are the basic tags. The first thing on here isn't really an HTML tag. All right? You can tell that because it starts instead of with a less than sign and then the name of a tag, it has a less than sign and an exclamation point. This is known as a declaration. And specifically, this is a doc type declaration or document type. This information tells the browser what kind of document to expect to get. All right. There's a couple ways we do this. One of the ways we do it is by giving it the HTML file. The other way we do, uh, ex extension rather, the other way we do it is via the doc type. And the doc type does more than simply tell it that it's an HTML file. The doc type tells it specifically that this is an HTML5 document. All right. Now you might say, I don't see anything that says HTML5, but the browser knows it's HTML5. That's a declaration for an HTML5. If we look at the declaration of the doc type for a HTML4 document, it's much more complicated. This is a doc type for an HTML4 document. All right, this line here. So if the browser sees that, it knows it's HTML4. If the browser sees this, it knows that it's HTML5. And we're going to be using HTML5 in this course, so all your pages should have that as a doc type. If you skip the doc type, the browser will guess at what document type that you want. And depending on the specific browser and the specific things you do, it might not do everything exactly the way that you'd expect. It might work without any problems. On a simple enough page, it might work without any problems. But on more involved pages, um, 
there's a chance that, that um, there'll be some inconsistencies. So that's not really a tag, it's, so therefore there's no ending tag to this. There's simply that declaration. That needs to be the very first line in your document. All right. Underneath it then we have the HTML tag. Yeah. That's further information that this is an HTML document. And that everything between the start HTML document and the end tag, or the start HTML tag and the end tag, is the contents of this particular web page. Notice what we have here, we have what are called nesting of tags. In our short example last time, we had tags and we had stuff within the tags. You know, we had stuff like this. We had our H1 tag and then we had the words camping and hiking and then we had the close tag. And then we had our H2 tag and then we had another H2 tag. Between the start and end tag, there can be other tags. So these nest. In other words, one tag contains other tags. So, and again, the word that's often used is, is containment. It contains it. So in other words, what this is representing is everything between here and here is part of this HTML tag. All right. Tags are to be properly nested. What I mean by properly nested is that there's no overlap. What I mean by overlap is if a tag starts within a tag, it needs to end within a tag. So for example, this head tag starts inside the body. All right? Therefore, I'm sorry, this head tag starts within the HTML tag. Therefore, it ends within the HTML tag. So both the start and end are between the start and end of the HTML tag. Likewise, the body tag starts and ends within the HTML tag. Now, between the head and body, there's no overlapping. All right? They both start and end within the HTML tag, and that's proper. All right? What wouldn't be proper would be this. I would switch those. All right? Because in this case, the head tag starts within the HTML tag, but ends within the body tag. So that's kind of, if you're going to draw lines between these, you'd have some overlapping here. That's oftentimes what, what you do if you're trying to figure out in more complicated examples, is you might get a printout and actually physically draw lines to see where things are nested. So... Like you might go something like this. In this case, we have head, body, and head, and body. If we were going to draw lines, we'd go like this. Oh, the lines cross, therefore they're not properly nested. If they were properly nested, it would look like this. No crossing lines. Notice what I've done also in this is I've indented to make the nesting obvious. All right? So in other words, the head tag is within the HTML tag, therefore it's indented a bit. The HTML tag starts all the way over on the left margin. The head tag is indented a tab. Likewise with the body tag. Now the title is part of the head section. Therefore I indicate that by indenting it. The title tag starts within the head section and it ends within the head section. There's no overlap. So I indent it to indicate that. The indenting is for your benefit. <clears throat> the browser will figure things out based on the manner in which it's nested. I could theoretically put every line of code on one line and just have one massive line 
with start tag, blah, 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 end tag, start tag, blah, 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 end tag, and so on, and just have one line. The problem with that is that it would be a mess if you had to go in and change it. It would be very hard to tell where one tag ended and the other tag began and so on. So therefore, what we do is we indent to indicate the nesting. All right? And we can even put blank lines in if we, help, if we think it helps organize the page better. So for example, I could put in a few blank lines just to make it clear that this is the head section and that's the body section. All that formatting is for your benefit. And your benefit comes in when you go back and try to change this. All right? A lot of the things that we do in both web and software development, we do because we know that this isn't going to be permanent, that there's a good chance that at some point in the future we're going to need to go back and change it. Or maybe someone else is going to need to go and change it at some point in the future, maybe after we've gotten promoted and some person takes responsibility for maintaining the website. And even if you've developed the code, if you're away from it for a couple weeks, the code will become very confusing to read. So therefore, we do these little things like indenting, putting extra lines, putting extra spaces to make the code more readable. The browser doesn't care about that. The browser will display it the same regardless. But it will be useful to us to, uh, to, to, to properly indent. We could even do something like this. If we thought that it made this clearer, we could do that if we wanted to. The browser is going to ignore anything beyond a single space. Anything beyond a sp single space, it treats like just one space. So it looks like that's on three lines in our source, source code. But if we go and view that web page, we'll see it's still just on one line going across. So any extra spaces or indenting or anything like that within the source document is purely for our benefit and, and the, not for the benefit of the browser. That, get, that can be frustrating at first as you're trying to line things up and, 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 and do stuff like that. We'll learn techniques to get around this, to, to make it look the way that you, you want to. Uh, it's actually a very good thing that we can lay out our code whatever way we think makes it readable and the browser gets it not based on how it's indented or how it's spaced out but based on the nesting of the tags. Any questions about any of this? Alright, let's look at some of the other tags in detail. All right, The head tag. The head tag is information about the page. It's not really the content of the page itself. All right? You're never going to have, for example, a paragraph or an H1 or a link or an image in your head section. For right now, the only thing you're going to have in the head section is the title of the page. The title of the page is a little different than the H1. Right? The H1 is sort of the top level heading and, uh, on the page and it displays as part of the body of the page. The title of the page is what appears on the um, title bar within Windows and, and within other operating systems in a similar place. Here's what I mean. Notice here the title of this page is My Camping Equipment Page. All right? If I look at this, when it's minimized, we can see my camping equipment. That's the title of the page. And if I expand it, whoops, I notice that that tab says my camping equipment page. So that title doesn't appear anywhere in the body of the page, but it appears on the title bar. And as I minimize this, again, it shows down there. So this should be something that's going to identify that page and appear in the title bar and appear when it's minimized. All right. For now, that's the only thing that's going to be in the head section. Later on, we'll learn some other things that you can put in the head section. But for right now, that's the only thing that's going to be in the head section. What about in the body section? All right, The body of the page 
is really, you know, this part of the page, what we see in the window. So if it's going to appear somewhere in the, and, and, and I'm hesitant to say body of the page, but if it's going to appear somewhere part of this window, it will be in the body section. All right. Which, in fact, is most of our content for the page. All right, because right now the only thing we put in the head, the information about the page is the title. The body, the bulk of the page is in the body section. And in this case, I have our H1s, H2s, and so on down the line. Remember from last time I indicated uh, that we have six levels of headers, H1 through H6. Now, keep in mind that doesn't mean that we can only have six headers on the page. Keep in mind those numbers don't represent the sequence. In other words, H1 isn't the first, H2 isn't the second, H3 is the third. It represents sort of the level they are, like on an outline. Like, you know, here's my notes for today. This might be a, an H1 because that's the top level heading if I was making a web page for this. This might be an H1 also because it's a top level where these would be H2 because they're second level. Going down here, this would be a, a H1, this would be an H2, these would be H3s. And so on down the line. Now you might ask the question, what would, you know, what do you do if you have more than six levels of headings? All right, and the answer probably is redesign your page. Because if you ever try to create an outline for a paper, if you're indenting more than six levels deep, you're not talking about a, a, a web page, you're talking about a contract or legislation or something that's incredibly complex. So more than six levels on an outline, things start getting very complex and you probably want to figure out a way maybe to break up the material in a different way. All right, or organize it in a different way. All right, questions about this point, uh, 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 up to this point, rather. Would a body indicate just screenshots? So if you went from screen to screen to a, to a web page, to a web, uh -huh. um, would that be body um, tag? No, I'm not, I'm not understanding what you're you're asking. You know, then, then keep going now. Okay. Are you asking about if there's two pages? Yes. If there's two pages, there'll be two separate HTML documents, each of which has their own body tag. Right. All right. That's kind of what I thought you you meant, but I wasn't entirely sure. Yes. No. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, that's forgivable to ask during the. No, I'm just joking. Uh, the question was: Is do I make the H1s or H6s? Do I make something in H1 or H6 based on the hierarchy, like the top level, second level, third level, or do I make it based on the way it looks? In other words, gee, I like the way that H6s look, so I'll make everything in H6. And the answer is unarguably, you do it based on the hierarchy. You don't do it based on the appearance. Now, folks that know me know that I'm a flexible person. So if I say that you never do something, that's an extreme case. All right? Oh, don't panic if you did it. Yeah, yeah, don't panic if you did it. You, know, uh, you didn't know this prior to that. And here's the reason why. Because we're going to control the way it looks via CSS. So we're going to go back later, when we learn CSS, we're going to go back and say, all right, this is a top level heading, but I don't want it to look like the default top level heading. I want it to look different. I want it to look maybe smaller, or a different font, or a different color, or anything about the appearance of it. We're going to control via CSS. That, if we take that approach of having the meaning of it, in other words, the logical meaning of the tag and the hierarchy in the HTML, and control the appearance via CSS, we have so much more flexibility to change the way our page looks without affecting the meaning. 
uh, of the page. Why is that important? For one reason, and, and this is you know this is a perfect example of why we do it. We might want our web page to look different on a mobile phone than we do on the screen. All right. So therefore, it's still a top level heading, but we might want it to look different on uh, a desktop browser versus on a mobile phone. So if we do it, if we tie those things together and we create our HTML tags based on the way we want things to look, then that really limits our flexibility to take the same page and display it a second way. All right. So yeah, the answer is, is we do it based on logically what it means. So uh, if it's the top level of a hierarchy, it should be an H1. You look at that and say, but I don't like that. It's too big. Well, either read ahead and, 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 and see how you can change that, or just bear with it for now, and, and we'll learn the ways to do that. Yes? So, so for our assignment, with the HTML, HTML5, huh? those three, would they all be whatever, like an H, the title of H1, would they say H2, H2, H2? Probably, yeah. Probably. You could organize it, you, you could organize it in probably several reasonable ways. Okay. Alright? You could, for example, make each one of them H1s. You could make an H1 that says an overview of web technologies and then each one's are H2. You could even do something like having an H1 that said overview of web technologies, make an H2 for HTML, and since HTML5 is just a kind of, you could consider that a subheading, you know, and make it an H3, and then make another H2 for CSS. So there's a lot of flexible ways that you could do it, based on how you logically see it and how you want to organize it. All right, so there's more than one right answer for this. That's why when I sketch mine up, it's not meant to be the only way to do it. It's a reasonable way to do it. But again, regardless of how you do it, as you break that down, it's broken down based on, on the meaning, the, the, the hierarchy of it. I, I guess the analogy is that you know, when you're marking up your textbook and you're putting notes, the way that, that your markup looks doesn't matter. The, the way your book looks doesn't matter. It's the meaning. In other words, the fact that you've said this is going to be on the exam is what's important, not the fact that you made it yellow. All right? If, that's kind of a weak analogy, but, but bear with me. Um, this is, uh, again, uh, it, that's a really a great question, by the way, all, all kidding aside. And this is going to be a recurring theme throughout the semester, is content in HTML, everything about appearance in CSS. All right. Okay, let's look at a couple of other tags that we, uh, that we have here. One of them is simply a paragraph tag. And paragraph tag is a P tag. Notice when I type in tags, I almost always, unless, well, I almost always, as soon as I type in uh, start tag, I put the end tag in. That just makes sure that I, I don't forget to go back and do that. All right. Now you might have the question, what happens if I don't nest these things properly? All right. What happens if I go and I put this down here? Uh, let me type something in about tense. There are many different kinds of are experienced sales staff can help you pick out what tent is right for you. All right. This is the way that it should look, all right, with everything properly nested. Paragraph tag and paragraph tag, all right. 
If we go and view this, that's what we see. All right. Notice that the fact that I put this on a different line has no bearing to the browser. All right. And that's actually a good thing because if you notice, what's going to happen is as I start to make this bigger or smaller, the text automatically adjusts itself to fit. So it, for that reason, it's a good thing that the breaks that we put in doesn't matter to the, uh, to the browser. Because then we can format it in a way that's readable and the browser will format it in a, reason, uh, you know, in a way that, that, uh, takes, you know, that takes into account the size of the screen. Now, if we think about this, again, if we think about this in terms of desktop versus mobile, if you're on a nice big desktop browser, you'll see the web page like this, taking advantage of all the space. If we're viewing this on a mobile device, maybe it looks like this. Well, we can still read it. All right, and that's, that's a good thing. So that's an example of how the, the breaks that we put in really don't matter because the browser ignores any of that extra white space. What happens if we improperly nest this? Are the alarms going to go off and the police burst in and arrest me or anything like that? Not for this, anyhow. All right. So let's go and save this and take a look at it. What happened? Absolutely nothing. It still worked. All right. Well, you might ask yourself then, what's, why do I need to worry about that if it works anyhow? Well, if you violate the rules of the language, essentially all bets are off. It might work. It might not work. It depends on the particular errors that you make. All right. Um, it's just like if you're ambiguous or you say something in, uh, you know, you say something that can be interpreted multiple ways and you, you, you are grammatically incorrect and someone doesn't follow your instructions correctly. Well, that's what you get for not speaking very precisely. Same thing here. They might get it right. They might not get it right. All right. Um. You know, the, the, the classic example is the old uh, Oxford comma, right? Um, if I made the statement, I have 100 tons of corn and wheat, what does that mean? Do I have 100 tons of corn and some wheat, an amount which I haven't specified, or do I have 100 pound or 100 tons combined between corn and wheat? Depending on where you place the comma, you're saying one thing versus the other. And if you aren't careful and don't place the comma correctly, all right, um, all bets are off. Someone's liable to guess wrong. They might guess right. They might understand what you mean, but they might also guess wrong. Same thing with the rules of HTML. Depending on your specific web page, all right, if you break the rules of HTML, it might work or it might not work. The browser essentially guesses at what you want to do. All right. Sometimes it will guess right, sometimes it won't guess right. And depending on the specific thing that you do uh, or the, the specific browser or anything like that. Now, um, this brings up a couple of important points. First of all, getting back to my 100 tons of corn and wheat, I might tell that to two people. One person understands me correctly, the other person understands me incorrectly. Well, guess what? Browsers are the same way. If I make a mistake in my HTML code, all right, one browser it might work perfectly fine in. It might work correctly in Google Chrome, for example, whereas maybe Internet Explorer it doesn't work so well in. All right? That's one of the toughest parts of the process of developing web pages is you have to make sure they work across different platforms. All right? And therefore, I was a little quick to celebrate this working because I just viewed it in one browser. I would expect it would work in other browsers as well, but I really should test it. All right. Here's the, the, here's the worst news, all right, worse than that, is 
even if I follow the rules, the browser still might make a mistake. How's that? Well, because the folks that wrote browsers are humans just like we are. All right? They don't do everything perfectly. There might be a third person that I say I have 100 pounds of, of corn and wheat, and I may punctuate it correctly, and they may still get it wrong. Right? They may still not understand what I'm saying, just because they're human and they make mistakes. Well, the people that write browsers are humans and make mistakes too. So, for simple web pages like this, it's kind of hard to get into trouble. All right? But, as we start getting more and more involved, a bigger issue is going to be us testing our pages in different web browsers and making sure that it works across several different web browsers. All right? Because just because it works in one web browser doesn't mean it will work in another. Your best bet for ensuring that it's going to work across the most browsers is to follow the rules, though. Just like, hey, you know, not, someone might misunderstand you even if you use absolutely correct grammar, but that's your best bet. All right. Okay, so that's our paragraph tag. Let's go and correct this. All right, and we'll put another paragraph in here. So now we have a second paragraph. All right. And again, H1, top level heading, H2's, second level heading, paragraphs that will go and we'll format their uh, stuff that way. I'm going to change this example up a little bit. All right. I'm going to add another level here. I think I can do this with the allotted time. I'm going to have camping and hiking as my top level still. I'm then going to put a second level for equipment. And then I'm going to have what I'm going to call an article about equipment. And that article is going to consist of a section about tents and a section about backpacks. All right. Now, what's an article? An article you can just think of as being a section of, the, of a page. It's, it's, it's a set of connected stuff. So if I was doing this, I might have an art on my camping and hiking page, I might have an article about equipment. I might have another article about safety underneath it. In which case I would have two articles on the page, one about equipment, one about safety. All right. As with the other, the, the bit about the headers that I was talking about before, headings I talked about before, there's not necessarily a right answer as to would that be one article with two sections or would that be two articles. It's however you see it in your mind, however you choose to organize it. So an article tag would look like this. Let me go in and put my additional tags in. and I could put an article. So in other words, here's my page about camping and hiking, and here's one article about it, the article about the equipment.
Now they talk about it in the book, and again, I don't think it's necessary to obsess about it at this point, but you could argue that that H2 is actually a top-level heading of the article and make it an H1, but we're not going to worry about that. The other thing they talk about in the book is there's other sort of structure tags. There are sections, for example, instead of articles. And again, that's not worth it to agonize. Is this an article or is this a section? I made it an article and that's what it is. So now if I look at it, it doesn't necessarily look much different with the addition of the extra headers I put in, but logically the page is structured in a certain way that I could start doing things from a styling perspective to make my visual point a lot more apparent. I could, for example, put a border around every article to give a nice little border so that people could identify the separate articles better. Or I could put a different background color or I could change the font or whatever. All right. So even though this doesn't necessarily have an immediate visual difference, it's important to get the structure so that we can do more stuff with it later on. Did I see a hand up? No. Okay. So, here's the interesting thing. There's not, in, th in theory, there's not too much more to HTML tags than this. All right? Um, so essentially, we're just, you know, we won't tell anyone, and we'll just take the next 14 weeks off, and, and you guys are done. Turn in assignment. No, 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 no. The devil, as they say, is in the details. But conceptually, there's not much more to tags than this. Tags look like this. Tags come in pairs. Tags are nested correctly. And each tag indicates some special meaning about the page. So what are we going to learn over the next week? We're going to learn more and more tags. We haven't talked about the tags that you use to create an image, for example. We haven't talked about the tags that you're going to use to create a link, a list of items, and so on. So we'll, the, the, the principle will be the same. We're going to use a tag to say, hey, this isn't just plain text, it's a link to some other web page. All right? But the notion of having a starting tag and an ending tag and nesting and all that, that will continue. The one thing that we'll also get into is attributes on tags. For example, this is additional information about the HTML tag. It's saying specifically that this page is done in English. All right? And that can be useful for browsers as well. All right, that's a lang attribute. When we get into images and links, we'll also use other kinds of attributes to indicate just some additional information about the tags. If I'm not mistaken, you now should have everything you need to know to do the first assignment. All right, so if you're running into difficulty, either talk to me in lab or send me an email or post it to the discussion forum. Any questions about any of this? All right, we'll see you over in lab.